So greetings and uh, welcome to an uh, interview, exclusive interview with Craig Hart, who's the USAID country director here in Tanzania. USAID being the United States Agency for International Development. We're going to hear more from what USAID does here in Tanzania from himself. Uh, Craig, karibu sana. Asante sana. Now, uh, we're really happy to have you here, and it's a pleasure uh, for your visit to come here. And there's a lot, actually, we would like to learn from what the USAID is doing here in Tanzania. Um, first of all, we would like to know, what, um, what has USAID been doing here in Tanzania? Because it has been a long-time partnership, more than 60 years. Right. So, Hilda, thank you so much for having me on the show. And I'm really excited to talk about what USAID is doing here in Tanzania. Um, and as you said, we've been here for more than 60 years, so we have done a lot. The exciting part is that we're currently rolling out more and more programs every single year. And so to complement the wonderful work that we've done in the past. So the great thing in the, in the last 20 years, let's say, um, has been that we've been able to work with the government of Tanzania, with its citizens, with other partners to address, address health issues. Um, and during that 20-year period, with more than about $7.5 billion worth of U.S. government investments writ large in the health sector, we have seen, at the same time period, um, the life expectancy of Tanzanians growing significantly, about 15 or 16 years during about a 20-year period. And so it's wonderful, um, as I come back to Tanzania, because I was here from 2011 to 15, and being able to come back and see the type of growth that's happening in terms of the life expectancy, in terms of you know, 2020, we saw Tanzania become a lower middle income country. Um, so the economic growth that's happening around that, um, the workforce development in terms of human capital, those are the exciting things to see over a long period of time. Um, the great thing is that we're also investing in multiple sectors still which is economic growth. Definitely our health portfolio is quite significant. Um, we have education, democracy and governance. We have um, environment programs as well, um, as water, si and sanitation, and hygiene. Um, and so some of those types of programs respond to today's most urgent needs um, in, in terms of looking at supplying and working with um, some of the water processing plants. We've got a, we just launched a $25 million activity to provide infrastructure to smaller towns in Tanzania uh, to be able to work with those water processing plants and to be able to manage that for health purposes. And so the range that we have is really quite um, massive and the results are even more so. And so it's a result of being able to work very closely with the government of Tanzania, working closely with our partners, and one of the partners I really want to talk about today a little bit is, is the private sector. Um, the private sector partners are so critical to being able to work with us and with the government of Tanzania to figure out how we can come together and look at these issues so that we find profitable, profitable ways to address development challenges. Mm -hmm. And, and you mentioned about partnering, and Tanzania is now considered as one among the middle-income countries. What role uh, does this partnership actually play, especially uh, during the sustainable uh, economy growth? Right. So we think that the, the private sector is not just engaged in economic growth. The private sector is engaged um, within our health portfolio, within our education portfolio. If you look at the hospitals and... Um, private schools as well. Those are areas where we want to see that growth happen because um, so with, with lower middle income country like Tanzania, we've got a lot of folks who are under the poverty line as well, about 45% under the $2.15 mark. And so we want to be able to focus on the, the, the most needy within Tanzania, absolutely. But to help us do that is to make sure that the, the folks who are um, on the higher income potential are actually paying for services that they want at a higher level, um, being able to have the hospitals and the schools and other, other options out there to be able to pursue those things. And so that's one example. Another example within the health is that we're working with the Vodafone Foundation, which has been a great partnership. Um, we launched um, M Mama um, this past year uh, with our administrator when she visited Administrator Power. 
And it's been great to see the type of um, work that's been putting into that for the last 10 years, because we started with a small pilot and have graduated to a, a countrywide program with the, with the help of, of President Samia as well. And so looking at the types of results that are coming out of that, we're seeing about 25% reduction in maternal and child health, or sorry, sorry, um, death, death um, when it comes to um, those mothers who are in a situation where they need to get hospital attention, um, but they don't necessarily have an ambulance, they're able to call um, and be able to be brought to a health facility to be able to deliver their baby. That is so critical, and it's one of um, the, the absolute priorities um, of President Samia and one of our priorities as well. So it's great to see the type of results that are happening with partnership with the private sector. Mm -hmm. You have been supporting uh, different initiatives like uh, the Imama that you've mentioned right. through uh, provision of grants sometimes. And just recently, um, you've provided $14 uh, million dollars, uh, in grants in Tanzania's private sector companies. Would you kindly tell us about these grants? Wonderful. So we've just got through with the, the grant making process. And then a really important part of that process is making sure that companies are also investing in themselves. And so we put $14 million up um, in the form of grants. Those companies that we are working with now um, put twice that much in terms of their own investments in their own companies. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that the private sector has the ability to grow as much as it can, especially in those areas where we consider to be priorities. So nutrition is a big issue in, in Tanzania. Um, despite being the breadbasket for this area, we still have 30% um, stunting. And so figuring out how we can expand the agricultural sector and work with the ministries to be able to do that is, is a priority. So we, we provided some of those grants to cashew processing. Now cashew processing is, hits on some nutrition, but it also hits on unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that, that more people have those jobs. So, so those 14 million that we have granted to the companies are expected to actually create more than 2,000 jobs. And so we have cashew nuts, we have honey, we have um, apparel industry as well. And some of those um, very much speak to both the job creation, but also creating greater, uh, a greater tax base. For, for Tanzania. And so we're looking to work together to do these types of um, investments as we look at the sectors that are ripest for growth. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that USA does, especially in uh, making a follow-up on how the grants uh, that you provided are used rightly? Yes, so we have a wonderful staff, uh, about 180 people within our mission. Um, just within USAID, and those staff are constantly going out to the field to make, make those partnerships work, if you will. And so they're looking at a variety of issues. Um, we have in Tanzania in terms of youth as well as women, how do we go about supporting youth and women when it comes to these types of projects? Mm -hmm. um, youth is an area, for instance, where we have um, worked with 160 different youth um, businesses, small businesses, micro businesses, mm -hmm. to be able to understand in the agricultural sector how they can start growing. And so that takes a lot of time on the ground. And so our staff has done a great job of um, sourcing the associations and other groups to be able to expand their um, engagement with these 160 youth companies. And those companies have actually put forth about 30% of the, of the um, the capital required for um, a variety of you know, mechanization, food processing, um, solar powered pumps, for example, mm -hmm. and a variety of other types of investments that help those small companies to start to grow. Now, you, you've spoken about African businesses and one among mm -hmm. the challenges yet is to reach out onto the, the uh, international market. And uh, you, you have uh, programs like African Growth Opportunity Act, AGOA, that right. really does that. How does it work? So AGOA um, is one of the areas where we're working very closely with the Ministry of Industry and Trade mm -hmm. um, to be able to take advantage of the um, AGOA Act that actually identifies almost 7,000 different products to be shipped duty-free to the U.S., which is wonderful. We need to take more advantage of that here. And so one of the things that we're doing is familiarizing the Ministry of Industry and Trade um, with where are those sectors that are most... Um, 
prone to be able to, to get to the standard level to ship to the U.S.? Um, what are the hurdles for those companies to be able to do that? Mm -hmm. Because we really see um, that as something that we can expand upon as another great um, opportunity, both in, in multiple sectors, really, not just agriculture, because we're also, as I mentioned, supporting apparels. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities for growth, and that's one of those that we're definitely pursuing, in addition to regional and within Tanzania, of course. Mm -hmm. And supporting these uh, initiatives is actually very important for the Tanzania's uh, economic future. What does uh, USAID do, especially in the youth-led organizations? Uh, we've spoken of agriculture, education, and uh, these are the initiatives that you, uh, you have been supporting. Mm -hmm. um, how do they contribute uh, to our country's economic growth? So the, the 160 um, businesses that I just referred to, those are priorities for the Ministry of Agriculture that we're working with youth because the, as the population really grows in Tanzania, we've got to make sure that that private sector is there to give those folks jobs, um, that that's a clear um, piece of the puzzle. And so we're working with those types of groups to say, how do we um, support the overall uh, approach in terms of building a better tomorrow um, with the Ministry of Agriculture? Um, and part of that is making sure that private sector is first and foremost in front. They have to be able to build um, and, and use their creativity, I would say, um, to be able to innovate and to build and to understand how they can best tap into the markets. Um, and so that's, those are the 160 that we're working with now, which is we're co-financing in some ways, right? Where we're providing grant, they're putting up their own financing, and we're coming together to look at those um, businesses and watch them grow. So that's on the one hand. On another hand, we're also working with vocational education mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Education and Vocational Training to be able to work with youth who are out of school, who may be dropped out for whatever reason to be, be able to understand what kind of skill sets are in demand, what the market is demanding, and be able to provide those skill sets through vocational education, both in terms of working with the government, but also working with private sector uh, providers of vocational education. So that's another great example of how our work really tries to in emphasize the need to focus on market demand and within the, the human capital component, what is private sector in demand for? Um, and so we've got a number of areas where we're working with those private vocational education centers mm -hmm. to be able to provide that. Uh, what is your view on the business-friendly uh, environment here in the country? Um, because USAID has been uh, functioning in other, uh, other countries too. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. So when we, talk to, when we talk to the private sector representatives, either, either Tanzanian business people or international, we, we get pretty consistent messages in terms of what's important to them. And I think understanding that's really critical to, want to, to see private sector and economic growth take off, continue to, to pursue um, the goals that Tanzania has. So one of the things that they talk about is the importance of consistent application of, of good governance, right, writ large. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about transparency. Um, and they talk about these things in terms of how it applies to the rule of law, for example. And so they want consistent application of a rule of law um, and transparency. And that relates to issues such as taxes. Being able to understand what the tax structure is, how those are implemented, and that they're implementing consistency, so that you, you ultimately have a leveling of the playing field. That everybody understands the rules of the game, if you will, and everybody plays by those rules. So I think those are some of the things that, that folks are, are telling us are probably the most critical, both in terms of Tanzanian firms, but also U.S. firms. Um, and I think that the other aspect is as we look at foreign direct investment, which can really help a country's growth, um, we're also talking about what is important to those firms in terms of what their customers say is important as well. And so if you look at the over the long-term growth of foreign direct investment, I think you know, investing in civil society and investing in political processes that, that respect the individual and are inclusive are all very much tied in that, to that together. Mm -hmm. So we have spoken about health, uh, we've spoken about agriculture. How else uh, does USAID partner with the government of Tanzania, especially in supporting uh, different initi initiatives here in the country? 
So there's a pretty wide range, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the areas that we've, we've been involved in quite a bit is um, environment. Um, looking at where we can, and since I'm kind of focused on the private sector component today, um, where we can work with businesses, um, tour companies, and hotels who are interested in promoting um, the environment um, and making sure that the wonderful wildlife here in Tanzania that so many people come to view um, and the wonderful, beautiful ocean um, are areas that, that can continue to be pristine for, for generations to come. So putting our heads together as to how we go about doing that, um, how we talk about, as we were just talking about before the show, some of the recycling issues, mm -hmm. some of the issues in terms of solar panels and being able to do renewable energy. Um, we just had a group, uh, a government group in from uh, India. Uh, we had a group that from Tanzania also, both private sector and government of Tanzania, that we worked with our USAID India mission to send over there, I think this is the second time that we've done that, to trade stories about and trade skill sets when it comes to increasing the renewable energy sector here in Tanzania. How do we plug it into the grid correctly? How do we incentivize the private sector in a way that makes sense for uh, feed-in tariffs, et cetera? So those are some of the areas that we're looking at. Um, we also have our education portfolio. And again, as I said, there's a lot of private sector schools mm -hmm. that are being stood up that also need that type of in, uh, incentive to be able to pursue um, their goals um, while supporting Tanzanians' education. Mm -hmm. There is a DFC, uh, Development Finance Corporation. Yes. Uh, maybe tell us more about that. Great. So with the, with the DFC, um, USAID has actually supported um, three different loan portfolios, totaling about $52 million. Um, one of them is in education, so looking at private schools as well as even parents who want to take out small loans um, to, to be able to support their children's education. Um, we've worked with the local banks to be able to support those loan portfolios. Um, the second one is, is um, agriculture, so looking at smallholder farmers, women and youth especially, um, to be able to increase their productivity on their farms. Um, and then the third area is health, so looking at private hospitals and private providers of health services to be able to increase and take loans uh, from the banks. So with those have encouraged the banks to really engage in those, in those private sector areas um, and understand the risk profiles there while reducing the bank's risks. And then, of course, DFC, just a couple of weeks ago at the UN General Assembly, announced another $300 million loan um, that they're going to be working through a, a local bank here in Tanzania to, to focus in on um, women and, and development. And so that's another opportunity that's coming forward as well. Mm -hmm. So now looking ahead, what are USAID's future goals uh, while working uh, with Tanzania? So I think we have a wonderful future ahead of us. Um, and, and again, kudos to so many Tanzanians who have made these things happen. When it comes to private sector, which is my focus today, I think that a lot of companies are looking for a workforce that is healthy and well-educated. Mm -hmm. I think on the healthy component, as I mentioned, er mentioned earlier, the life expectancy in Tanzania has just skyrocketed over the last 20 years. Really impressive. We need to keep catching up to the demands, though, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to health. And so that's one area that we're, that we're focused on. Um, and being able to respond to the latest needs, um, and both in terms of communicable and non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that that's one of the areas that we're looking at. Um, one of the, a, great, a great case study, if you will, is the malaria work that we've done throughout uh, Tanzania, um, looking at how the reduction of malaria increases um, and allows the, tourist, the tourism dollars to, to flow more freely. Mm -hmm. And so by not having to be concerned about malaria, let's say in, in Zanzibar, as much as it had been in the past, um, that allows those things to come together very, very nicely for the private sector and for the government as well. But how can these local businesses and communities also engage with the, get engaged with the initiatives that you do? Right. So all of our, all of our processes are competitive. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, the $14 million that I mentioned earlier with, uh, with companies that are expanding their, their, their businesses, what they were able to do is to be able to respond to a request for applications 
and um, indicate how much they were going to be putting toward the expansion of their business and how many positions and jobs that that would create. And so everything that we do, we post on our website in terms of competitive um, processes. And then we have probably in excess of about 50 implementing partners, many of whom are Tanzanian organizations that then have their own comp competitions as well. Mm -hmm. And so staying in tune with that is great. One of the, th one of the easiest ways to do that um, that we've set up on our webpage is uh, a description of each and individual activity that we have, all 45, 50 activities. Within that, uh, private sector can go there, read the description very short, and have a contact as to who they can reach out to to have the conversation. Because sometimes it's not about receiving a grant. Sometimes it's about how can we work together mm -hmm. toward similar goals to be able to achieve something bigger than either, either individual. As we wrap this up, uh, Craig, what would you like to share about USAID and especially about the private sector partnership that you have? So I think sometimes uh, folks who are not familiar with development partners or maybe with USAID specifically think that we are focused only on the, the government of Tanzania, let's say, or only on civil society um, or only on humanitarian assistance. We're not just focused on those things. We're very much, especially in a country like Tanzania, focused on working with the private sector to achieve the goals that we want to get to. And so what, we, what I would like to do is just have a, an invite um, for any private sector to be able to engage with us in the means that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, we have information um, that we can share about how to work with us, how to work with our partners more directly and I think some of those contacts that are on the website are ones that we want to promote and to have a qu quick conversation. It can be quick sometimes, right? You can figure out, are we in the same um, area in terms of our goals? And if so, let's figure out how we can work together. Thank you very much, uh, Craig, for your time. And uh, as we finish, this is my last question, Great. just in addition. You have been in Tanzania for quite some time, uh, from 2011 to 2015 as the program officer, and now as the country uh, director, USAID country director. Mm -hmm. um, have, you, have you cashed any Swahili along the way uh, that you have learned? Aha. Kidogo. I'm just curious. <laughs> Kidogo, right? Um, I would say that not as much as some of my other colleagues who have been more focused. However, um, I, I have definitely got the the um, the habari za sabui, which mm. I didn't start with and should have. Salam. Um, <laughs> you did actually. <laughs> and so um, a few other um, introduction introductory remarks, that type of thing. I'm afraid. Baby steps, but I wish you uh, all the pole best. Pole. <laughs> So thank you very much uh, for letting us interview you today and uh, Karibu Tenaza Media Limited. It has been a pleasure to have you here. Asante sana. Asante sana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And this is how we wrap it up uh, with the United States Agency for International Development uh, Country Director Craig Hart speaking of uh, different things that USA does, especially here in Tanzania. I am Hilda Foyer. Stay tuned with Asa Media Limited.